everyone. Welcome to Deep Ellum Art Company's Art Co. Afternoon Arts. Thank you for joining me. My name is Amber Crimmings. I am the art director slash cat herder here. You see Dubes is hanging out with us today and we are going to be working on some artistic pieces. We're actually going to be using some of our leftover magazine pieces and we're going to play around with a really fun kind of project doing collage. I like collage and I like mixing all of my mediums together. I think that makes for a very fun project and it makes it super fun for dupes too because he likes to watch and we get to cut up paper and all kinds of jazz. Doing uh, bits of collage I think is really fun and playing with it in a multiple uh, different ways is really important. It's a medium that we can use to help facilitate a lot of different ways in order to get forth that visual kind of look. So we can do that you know, with collage, with various colored papers here. Dubes remembers this, he recognizes this. We did our little quilling project, so that's actually using collage in a different way when we're taking paper and setting it on its side so that we have this really nice kind of fun design work that we create using all those papers glued together because the collage is gluing multiple pieces together. And we also did this long-term project where we played around with collage in order to create this surrealist kind of landscape. So we're just going to kind of play around today and have it create this fun little starburst pattern and then we're going to paint some more realistic things on top of it. You see here we started doing some little kind of dot work and things with our paint in order to show a really nice kind of look of pattern in there. Hey Bill, how you doing? Bill says, thought we missed it. Hey Amber and Dubes, I saw yesterday got yanked as copyright. Glad to see you back. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, you know, we got to be careful with the music sometimes, which is funny because it's not like we don't pay for the licenses. But, you know, anyway, we're going to play around with our collage today. And really the first part of this is we want to prep. You can tell Dubes is excited about the prep. He's always excited when things start flying around in the air. So we're going to need some simple scissors or uh, something that we want to cut with. And I'm going to do this in a really quick manner. I'm going to show you guys the two different ways that we're going to get these cut down. And then we're going to play around with getting them pasted on our paper. So you see here I've got my regular book that I'm usually always working in. And this is mixed media. Remember, this is uh, watercolor paper, about 140 pound is what it is. And this is what I like using for a lot of these projects because we like to play around with mixed media because, you know, creativity is about exploring and not being stuck in little boxes. And um, I like working in these books because it keeps all these together, particularly when we start working oops, with our... I'm starting to have things fall down with our journaling. You know, I've got this little book here. This is where we were working on our journaling. You see the ones that we worked on the week before and all this jazz. So this is really fun for us to play with and be able to keep all these together in one little spot. I like that. Yeah, Dubes is happy to be back in class, you know. I was out of town, out in the wilderness there for a bit. Um, not too wilderness, though. It was like this little lake house kind of getaway, but it was uh, much needed to be out of town and disconnected. It just, you know, made things a little different when it came to doing our classes. So I'm going to take this guy, and I'm actually going to pop you guys down. Now, I've got this really old, but so you can tell how old it is, the plastic yellow, and I'm pretty sure it wasn't that yellow when it was bought, but I did just turn 42, so I'm an old lady now. All right, so I'm going to take this paper, and I'm going to do this uh, with my little fancy paper cutter, and I'm just going to get some little strips in here. I don't really want them to be super thick, and I'm actually taking just a big old pile. Actually, you know what? I could probably cut them a lot more efficiently in a really big pile. So look how I'm going to work smarter and harder. I'm going to use this since I have this fancy gadget and tool. I tell you, paper cutters were always my favorite thing as a teacher because holy cow, can they cut down on time for sure. And so I'm just kind of taking these. I'm not being too terribly picky on how perfect they are. You know, I'm going to be using these and overlapping them and doing kind of this neat little starburst pattern. 
So I'm not too terribly worried about it. Good enough for government work is, you know, not the best of sayings. However, it is a saying, so we'll work with that. And so I'm just getting this cut down. Now, if you don't like cutting it this way, slash, you don't actually own a paper cutter, that's fine. Good old scissors work just as well. You just want to try to not have them too wavy. So I'm going to take them and I'm going to, oops, that was not the right button. I'm going to take them and I'm just going to, you know, try to hold on to my paper. Keep it from shifting too terribly much as I'm cutting it. Sometimes holding it in the center helps keep it from getting that swirly kind of thing going on. But we really just want to keep this as straight as we possibly can as we get these strips cut. You know, generally around the same thickness will work. Yeah, so I've got this really great pile of all these different pieces of paper. So I'm going to use these to kind of start getting started on my project. You can tell Dubes is super excited about this. He's always excited when we start playing with strips of paper because those, you see, it's his favorite. That's why we do strips of paper and we do lots of collages. That way I can also entertain the cat. See, look, he got it. Killer. That's killer, man. All right, so we're gonna start playing with our paper. I'm gonna get this guy over here so that you can see a little bit better. Look, you can even maybe catch Sir Dubes' face as we work on the paper. See, there you go. <laughs> I've got a bit of Mod Podge here, so I'm going to use this to actually kind of get all of these guys uh, attached on the paper. And like I said, I'm going to work right on my book. So this is about uh, 11 by 14. That's about how book, big this book is. And I'm really just going to find a little center point. You don't have to use the ruler. You can just kind of eyeball it. I'm going to get a bit of a center point here. Right there, probably right there is going to be a good center point for me. And this is really where I want all my strips to kind of radiate out from. And by radiate out, I mean literally the radiate out. So I'm going to actually go ahead oh, and get my glue open if I can. Oh, okay. Woo! I put that on a little tight. Do you guys ever do that? Do you ever do you ever do that where you put the lid on extra tight and then you're like, oh crap, I didn't realize I was hulking it at the time I was closing that last time. Well, <laughs> all right, so I've got my Mod Podge, I've got my glue, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna get a little amount here. See, I've got kind of a globbity glue. It's all right. I'm just gonna take this and just kind of spread it out. Just because I'm gonna be working pretty fast, so I'm just gonna get this on about the top half my piece here and then I'm just gonna set this off to the side for now and I'm gonna work on getting all of my little papers to my center and I'm just gonna tear them off once I get to that center point and I'm not really gonna do much else than that right now I really don't want them to super overlap yet so I'm actually going to build this slowly and they're all going to be slightly different and that's okay. I want them to be slightly different. And so I can hit these on top. If I see them curling down, that way I've got a good amount of glue on there. Now this is always, again, I'm always going to tell you the awkward teenage phase is going to happen. Here we go. We're going into the awkward teenage phase. You're like, Amber, this doesn't even look like a real art project. But it does because uh, art's really about the act of creating. You don't have to worry about being <clears throat> cool or anything else. I mean... Half the time, y'all, the people you think are cool are only cool because they don't care what you think. Yeah. Isn't that funny? A little conundrum there. Okay, so I'm taking all these guys, and we're getting them to the center of this. And I'm just getting a nice little covering here. Again, we're working in a starburst pattern. 
I'm going to want all these to eventually end up in the center and on there. We're just going to continue to get all these attached and add in, added in. Get this guy. Yes, uh, Bill, Dubes definitely likes the paper and the yarn. They are his forte indeed. His favorite projects are the ones with floppy, floppy things, for sure. He liked the sewing, too, with the yarn or the string. That was fun for him. And so you guys see as I'm doing these, I'm kind of hitting it with a little bit more glue. And we are kind of starting to get a nice little spread there. So I'm going to actually extend my glue out because I want this to go in a nice full-on kind of circular pattern. This will be good um, for the design portion of this. And so this ends up reading really cool because as we throw these eyes in here, it becomes a really neat kind of uh, weirdo, fun pseudo cat slash monster face or a person's face. I'm probably going to throw some regular eyes in here because I think it'll be fun looking. And so you see I'm just continuing to build these. Notice I'm putting glue on top each time I do this or after I get a couple done, because I want to make sure I've got a solid connection here on the paper. I want it to be nice and connected. And notice I'm not too terribly worrying about everything being the same. I've got some different colors through here. I picked some papers that were kind of similar anyway. And so I want to have these dark colors kind of get thrown into the mix. And see, I'm going to start getting fairly thick in the center, but that's okay. We'll just continue to work on those. Continue to get these all the way on here. There we go. And so we're continuing to work. Work, work, work. Like Rihanna says. And I'm getting all this glued down. We're going to eventually have enough that we don't have any of our white paper really showing um, through this once we get completely done with the assemblage of it. I like the word assemblage, assembling. Alright, so we're continuing to work. Bill says, Hamber, we trust you. You always get us through the awkward teenage phase. ATP. That's right. Yeah, look at that. Ooh, look, I wasn't even planning on cutting it like that. But look, I got this guy's eyes, like, perfectly in there. That's super fun. That's super fun. Okay, I'm, I think I, I like that little eyeball look, so I'm going to make sure that one is cut on this end so that I can make sure that's out there. Oh, that's fun. Look, we've got a, somebody staring at you. Okay, I'm continuing to build this, pushing through the awkward teenage phase. And I'm really starting to pick a bunch of colors. It's all right. I'm going to go in. You see, I'm not super loading it up with glue, but I've got just enough in there that'll help keep me nice and grounded. And so you see I'm just kind of putting my fingernail down on here and just pulling real hard and real fast. Well, I was, and then it was working until I said it. But that kind of helps me tear that paper off and get rid of it, and I'm just throwing it off in the trash. That's super easy to do. And again, I'm just I'm loading up small amounts of that glue on here as I'm working. Actually, that's short enough. I could probably fit that over here so that we've got those in both sections. And I'm just making sure these are all nice and even and laid down on the paper. 
And you see some of these, because my paper shifted so much, some of these are really skinny. And look, that's super helpful because that gives me a cool, just real thin, skinny section here. So you see how this is starting to build up. It builds up in this really fun kind of manner where we end up creating this cool radial balance. Remember, we talk about in our elements and principles of art, our radial balance. So something that is, uh, you know, balanced on all sides, left, right, up, down, top, bottom. And so we're creating this sense of uh, radial movement before we actually get in to the actual painting part of this project. We're at 329. We're going to have to start moving fairly fast if we want to get these eyes drawn in, which I do. I'm very much interested in getting you guys to the painting part of this. So this is just the collage part. Again, you want to try to make sure that you've got things set up where you want them to be that you're creating an interesting composition um, both with uh, the use, through the use, of color in paper. You notice I didn't pick a bunch of bold colors for this. I didn't really want to. I wanted to make sure that we had a fairly kind of muted because I wanted the eyes to pop out whenever I did the eyes. Kind of worked all the way around except for down here, but that's all right. We'll get some more glue on down here. And then we'll get our paper glued on. See, this isn't terribly, terribly complicated. We're creating a really cool kind of look right here just through the use of our paper strips. This makes things fairly simple. It also creates a cool basis, because again, you know, you may look at this and go, ew, Amber, that's ugly, and that's okay. But give it a minute, you might end up liking it, or perhaps this is just not a style that you like, and that is also cool. It is A-OK -okay to not like things. There, I'm just going to stick that one there. So I'm working on getting some more of these little holes cleaned up. You see I've got a kind of big hole there. So I'm getting this glued down, smoothed out. You know, we're always trying to work to smooth things out. There we go. Again, pulling on that paper making sure I'm getting it to the right uh, whoops, to the right length that I want and then I also want to make sure it's straight and that it's pointing right to that center. You see this works really well when everything is really just going to that center quite solidly. That's what we're looking for. You know, same thing as individuals. We kind of want to be balanced and centered, right? So this is a fun way to play with that visually and that idea. So I'm continuing to get these pushed down, continuing to work. Oh, look at this. Look at this great piece of balanced artwork we've got going on. And see how fun and clean that's starting to look. I mean, sure, it's just like a conglomeration of pieces that go out to the center. However, this is going to give us a cool basis. And what's fun about this project, I think, is the transformation that you see and you're like, wow, I didn't think it looked that neat, but it kind of does in the end, I think. I mean, not to toot its horn too much, but it is pretty cool, you guys. I'm just saying. Okay. <clears throat> Reusing these pieces. That way I can get both of those in there. I'm 
starting to get some glue on my fingers, but that's all right. And I'm just, if anything's popping up, sometimes they'll, you know, they'll get popped up because uh, the magazine will wrinkle. You just want to kind of use your brush, smooth those down, because it stretches out the paper a little bit, because what happens is the paper gets a little wet, so it'll stretch it all out. So we want to make sure that we're uh, straightening all that stuff out. Ooh, you guys, look, look at this new shirt. We've got panels going up at Deep Bellamar Company, if you were not aware. Um, we are helping showcase all the panels that went up in the Deep Ellum area on top of businesses to help protect those businesses that had windows that were broken, you know, help add healing to the community. It was a really great grassroots movement made up of multiple individuals um, and artists and organizations that all kind of came together and just started all independently working on creating panels, creating artwork on top of the plywood boards, doors that were on top of businesses. Uh, to protect them and businesses that have been damaged in Deep Ellum. <clears throat> so we're going to be showcasing that uh, really wonderful exhibition of all these panels that have been taken down. I think I've got over 40 panels sitting in our backyard right now. That's why I'm kind of messy and my hair needs to be did and all that jazz because I was out there earlier this morning. We were cataloging and working to get some stuff cut down, but we're hoping, uh, not hoping, we will hmm, be bringing you a showcase here really soon, a virtual walkthrough of all of these great panels that artists uh, worked and came together to create to give local business uh, owners a bit of healing um, and then also, you know, show the love for the community. Um, we're hoping to open soon, not too sure when that's actually going to happen. I know for now on September 5th we've got a plan to do a virtual walkthrough of this exhibition but we are planning on having this exhibition set up in our backyard and it will be out there for quite a long time um, so that people will have a chance to come by and be able to see it as well. Um, tomorrow night Bill too Tomorrow we are probably not, we are skipping our Saturday class um, because I am hosting a front yard concert in my home in Rockwall. We are going to have the fantastic Remy Riley performing in my front yard for the entire neighborhood um, and for Deep Ellum. I'm super, super excited to be able to uh, do this and super excited that we're going to be able to stream it on our Deep Ellum Art Company uh, YouTube channel as well. Um, so make sure you guys are taking a look at that tomorrow. Um, that's going to be from 7 to 8.30. Um, I'm super excited um, to, uh, you know, try something new. I've never done a front yard kind of concert. I think it'll be uh, really cool and I'm excited to share that with you guys. And we'll see how it sounds in my front yard in jazz. It'll be really great. We're doing another one on September 5th as well. And I'll have uh, mahogany out then. So, yeah, it's going to be a good time. It'll be a good time for community since we can't get open. This was also a great way to figure out, uh, you know, a way to pay a musician and then also help them. Um, perform and maybe pull that idea out here in Rockwall as well. Uh, it's, I think it's a really great idea to get together, know your neighbors more, um, live music, and this was just a really great opportunity, so I'm happy to be able to do it and do it live. But that means tomorrow we're not going to have an art class. We will be doing that instead live because I've got to prep things here on site. Um, but I am excited after we get done with this class that our next one will be on Monday and then we can get some really nice core things done because if you remember Mondays are our back to basic days and so that's going to be a great day for us to get back to our basics and work on everything that we need to work on to get better at showcasing all of our talents. Alright, so this is still kind of wet. But that's okay because I'm just working with some acrylic, so it's not going to be terrible, terrible for me. I don't think I have any, maybe that is viable white. First off, I want to get some white down for my eyes because I'm going to be creating um, some big old 
eyeballs in here, and I'm going to need the white part. If anybody remembers, we went over all the parts of the eye. The white part of the eye is called the sclera. Sclera is this little white part. And it's not always bone white, but it's fairly white. But I want to go in here, and I want to get some of this. Ooh, my white's just good. I'm just going to use... I'm going to try not to lean over and make you guys stare at my hair. Um, but I'm going to go in... I'm going to create some big white shapes. And I just for now just want to get some white paint in here. And I'm going to try to get it in here as evenly as I can. And as neatly as I can. And so I've got one there. There, I'm happy with that shape. And then I'm going to get my other one drawn in. Okay. So I think I'm happy with that shape as well. And I'm just going to get this kind of drawn in on top of my magazine pieces. Again, this is another fun way technique to play around with collage. And it doesn't have to be eyes that you draw on top of it. You can play around with a lot of, uh, wait, who's 8-ball? Love, help, slots. Who, um... I'm trying to see what's going on with her. I don't know what, uh, who knows. Oh, anyway, okay, I'm not sure who, who's typing on the Deep Ellum Art Company thing. Okay, so I've got my eyes drawn out. I've got all that white in there for the Slera. Oh, testing the chat bot. I don't know if everybody else can see the chat bot or not, but I can see a chat bot. Okay, so I'm going in, I'm getting my eyes done. I also want to get my nose taken care of. Because I'm going to do like a little cat, why not? That'd be fun. It's not like I'm, I'm going out of the norm here, because I am definitely already probably the crazy, the crazy art lady. See, even Bill wants to know. Bill wants to know who it is. Who is it? Who's there? I'm going to get a nose drawn in. Ooh, that's really orange. I didn't mean to do that. But we'll just go with it, you know? Ooh, look at that. See how cool that's already looking. I'm going to get a bit of red in there. Ooh, that's a lot of red. That's not a bit of red. And so I'm just going in here and getting some... There, that kind of softens it up a little. That makes me happier. So I've got some cool stuff going on for that. For that. Now I'm going to want a nice... I'm going to want a nice bluish green for the eyes, but we're going to start out... a nice blue but I'm gonna actually go in here and I'm gonna go on top of this with a green but I want to get a blue in as a nice base I am NOT paying attention to any other part of the eye I'm just doing a great circle here that way I know where the color for my eye is gonna reside and I'll deal with all the other elements of the eye once I get to that point. But for right now, I just want to get a little pigment in here. We can do this in layers, y'all. You know, a lot too many people feel like that once you paint, you just like paint it once and you're done and you don't go back to that section. And that's not how it really works most of the time. You gotta hit it a couple times in order to 
get that technique or get that texture, or get that richness of color that you need. Yeah. Ooh, yes, please subscribe to our channel. If you guys are watching and you haven't already subscribed to our channel, make sure you click the link wherever it may be and subscribe to us. This helps us figure out ways to monetize um, and it also helps us, you know, bring more classes to you. Um, it helps improve our analytics. It does all kinds of things. All right, I'm going in, and now, remember I said I was going to do some green for these eyes, and I am. But because I had that blue in there already, it gives me a good kind of background, etc. And so I'm just going to take this. Just kind of pull it into the center here. We're going to end up going around everything with black. So again, we're just playing with techniques. We're playing with this idea of taking our magazine papers, using them as a sort of pattern or technique in the background before we actually go and paint on top of them. And so to me, this is a really fun way in order to take a piece and uh, add something on top. Uh, maybe you care about what the strips say. Maybe this is something that is, is held for review. Subscribe inside. This will help you um, figure out how you want to approach this type of project. You know. Maybe what the magazines say is important. Maybe this ends up being some weird poem all the way around, right? Maybe you type up things and you print them out and then you cut them out and then you create this whole process on your own. So this is uh, something that you can play with in a variety of different ways um, to cater it to you and your personality. And so I'm going to go through and I'm going to start working on my eyes. I like actually... Yeah, I'm going to work on this one. I like to turn my book a lot because it helps me, I think, in order to solidify slash get some nice clean lines. And so I'm just going in with my paintbrush, practicing my line work. Getting clean lines around my eyes the best that I can. Now you can do this with a variety of mediums. Again, you don't have to use See, I'm just doing a fun little play on like a I don't know cat slash person slash thing. In the newspaper magazine articles. Instead of the swamp thing, the new th the news thing. <laughs> My white's a little wet still, but that works alright. So I'm going through getting all this stuff lined out. all taken care of. Look at this. Get the nose. Oh, that's looking quite fun. You see, look. Look how quick this starts coming together, you guys. I always find it fun how quickly things start getting out of the awkward teenage process. Kind of like my daughter. My daughter's 16. A little, so much fun to kind of re-remember what it's like to be at the age. See how that's starting to kind of starting to kind of come together. I'm just saying. I'm gonna give this one 
some cool cat eyes. Since my paint's still wet, I'm kind of wiping off my brush each time I go in and do this. Because I want to make sure I've got a really good connect there. Yeah, that's looking pretty neat so far. I'm not hating it, you guys. I'm kind of liking this. It's kind of super fun. Not too terrible. I think Dubes will like the cat face too. <coughs> and it is kind of inspired by Dubes. Because Mr. Dubes does happen to have the green eyes. See, I brought him so he could take a look and see if he approves. He's not sure if he does. But if anything, he's happy to be petted. You guys see that. <laughs> so I'm going to work in and get the other eye filled in. You can see my paint's a little wet, so it's fighting with me a little bit. But that's because I'm kind of trying to get this done for you guys. If your paint is still wet, certainly take the time if you have it and let it dry. Or you can always dry this out with the trusty hair dryer in order to get that kind of all taken care of. You can go in too, uh, depending on what kind of face or animal you've got in there. You can go in and add whatever details, you know, would work for whatever it is that you drew in your fun little kind of thingy. So you can play around with anything. You can play around with words on top of this, faces, all that jazz. So there's a lot of different ways to kind of play with projects like this and really just take this idea and technique of mixing the medias together and trying to create something that's a little bit on the abstract side, right? A little bit on the playful side and just playing around with techniques on things that you normally wouldn't put together. So this makes for a fun art project and a fun way to reuse materials around um, all of our tenets of our, you know, those elements and principles and the act of practicing and creating and uh, looking at things in a different way because that's really the process of art. Whether you're a young kid in elementary, whether you're working on a huge five-foot piece for a fine art gallery as a seasoned artist or someone who's just making things in a book at home, the act of Creating an art is experimenting and doing things in different ways and figuring out what your voice is. And, you know, that's a very, very uh, personal experience. And, you know, teaching that, I always work to try to give you those techniques and give you these ideas so then maybe if something does really hit you and you're like, ooh, that tickles my fancy, that's something I really like, then that's going to be the thing that you kind of run off with. Not all the classes may hit on that nerve, but if at least one does and it gets you super creating and maybe figuring out your voice, that's really all you need. Yeah? Um, uh, China Cat Poppin says, oh yeah, meow, beautiful Amber. Hey, hey, thank you. Happy you're hanging out. Happy you're checking out our classes. Make sure you take a look at our online gallery and shop of local artists at www.dflmart.co.com. We've got a lot of pieces for sale by local DFW artists in there. Make sure you take a look and peruse. We've got prints as low as 25 bucks, and we've got artwork pieces going up um, in much higher numbers, something for every collector. Um, and then we've also got all of our archive videos on Facebook and YouTube. So make sure you take a look at our past Art Co. Afternoon Arts classes or any one of our many art streams and watch parties that we've done in the past um, and support local artists and musicians, etc. Bill says, thanks, Amber Dubes, and the rest of you are glad to have you back. Glad you had a fun break. Hey, thank you again. It was a fantastic birthday. Can't ask for much more. I'm quite happy to be in my 40s. As a matter of fact, I think it's like my favorite so far. I'm not, I'm not hating on the 40s at all. I, I like the, the woman that I am uh, in these days. Much more fun than the 20s, I think. So, I don't know. I was in the Army in the 20s. It was pretty fun, too. So. Ah, 
I'm just happy to be where I am. Hey, thank you guys so much. I will see you again on Monday, but I'll also see you again tomorrow just in a different way because we're doing that front long concert. So make sure you're checking us out at 7 p.m. If you have not heard Remy Riley, she is one of my favorites. A beautiful young gal that has a beautiful voice. And uh, I hope you guys take a moment tomorrow during your Saturday evening activities to tune in, uh, support, and take a listen. Um, everybody have a wonderful Friday evening, and I will see you tomorrow.